Hello everyone, uh, I'm making a video not from our usual location today. It's 4th of July weekend and I'm working from home. I've been investigating a pretty nasty Aka.net bug and this is my reproduction scenario. You can kind of see up here running in the background. This is a little uh, Kubernetes cluster that we have running in our test lab. And the problem that I've been trying to investigate is why does this pod, which has some custom telemetry I've written, why does this pod keep crashing? It uses more or less the exact same infrastructure the rest of these other services do. So what is it that's causing this pod to crash and why does it not crash when I launch it directly from Visual Studio with a very similar uh, configuration to this? So I'm making this video more or less to kind of document an Aka.net pitfall that users should be aware of. So the issue that we have here is that this pod, if I go ahead and uh, rerun my Kubernetes command here, let's pull this up. Uh, looks like it's crashed and restarted again. So this pod keeps crashing over and over again. It's crashed 17 times so far, and I had not been able to figure out why. What's running on this pod from a workload perspective is this is some Aka hosting code. This is all part of our test lab, and this is all the infrastructure we're using to try to basically detect potentially duplicate shards is what we're looking for, which is a pretty severe bug. So this is our infrastructure we built to try to address that. This code itself is actually using cluster sharding. So all the other nodes in the cluster can report their shard activations to this one central actor who's gonna essentially build a dictionary of all the different sharding actors that are alive. That's its job. And one of the things that we have to do is basically make sure that this duplicate detector is up and running immediately so it can start to basically grabbing Akadot cluster events as they occur. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we need to make sure that this actor gets up off the ground right away. And so I have this little function down here called add duplicate detector startup. This is designed to wake up this actor the very first time, uh, basically before the sharding system activates. It's designed to go ahead and wake this actor up. And if I scroll down here, here's what that method does. We send this actor a, we go ahead and get it from the registry. We send this actor a custom message that the actor will handle and the actor will go ahead and reply back. And this does a little quick round trip to make sure this actor is alive. If I go and run this locally, this will work just fine. Well, the thing that was causing me to pull my hair out is the only reason why this container is basically crashing is because the process is exiting. If I go and take a look at the logs, let me see if I can grab that here. If we take a look at the logs for this pod and take a look at it, you know, ignore some of that spam here, but basically what's happening is we're joining a cluster with about 15 other nodes in it, aside from this one. And right after we successfully join the cluster, if I, well, I'll keep, I won't bother going through all of it, but basically the long and the short of it is not long. Yeah, and this is also kind of blending the logs together from all the different starts, but long and the short of it is this container shortly after it joins the cluster ends up leaving on its own volition. And what I was able to do is our test lab right here is hooked up to a seek and is hooked up to Grafana and Zipkin and .NET Aspire, a whole bunch of other you know, telemetry tools. Well, I noticed that this particular pod, which I have all the logs for it right here, and I have one time range of one specific crash I was interested in. What I noticed was we had a message that appeared a little bit earlier. Here we go, this one. Uh, application is shutting down, unable to start Akka hosted service. Uh-oh. And the reason why is we had a cancellation. Uh, so a task got canceled somewhere inside the startup process. And it says here, this is line 68 of the server config file. And sure enough, if I dig into here, this is a trace we captured from Phobos right down here. So this is tracing the ask operation. So Phobos is basically just using a little bit of open telemetry tracing. And we can see that what happened is this ask operation from this temporary actor to the sharding system failed when we were trying to send that awake message. And so here's the, the subtle bug that's occurring here. This code works fine when I launch this directly from Rider because we're forming like a one node cluster right away. And so the sharding system is ready to go on very short order. When you send a message to a shard region, which is what this duplicate detector actor is, this is a shard region. This is part of Akadot cluster sharding. You can see a link to our video about that right here. But the basic gist of this is that the shard region, until you've joined the cluster, it can't actually start any actors or do any work. 
it has to wait until it's a member of the cluster. Otherwise, the sharding system can't function properly. The whole point is to have awareness of who's in the cluster and who isn't so we can distribute actors accordingly. If we're not actually part of a cluster right now, we cannot do that. So therefore, this ask operation is just going to start up on its own immediately as soon as the process starts. If it takes us longer than three seconds to join a cluster, this operation is going to fail. And because we're you know, spinning up a pod and it's joining a Kubernetes cluster and we're doing service discovery and we have to wait for other pods to start and that can take a few seconds because Kubernetes rolls them out one at a time, this operation is going to time out more than likely. So that's the little pitfall that we have here is that this code is actually dependent on the cluster being up and running in order for it to do its job properly and especially to do it within this deadline. So because we are not actually checking to see what our cluster status is right now, that is why this is timing out. And this exception is getting thrown and is causing the hosted service that runs Aqua Hosting behind the scenes to error out, which causes the process to exit. Uh, we should add some more explicit logging probably in Aqua Hosting to make this a little bit easier to find. But what I'm gonna focus on next is gonna show you how to fix this. If you have code that is dependent on the cluster being available, how do you stop it from running until the cluster is available? Well, let me go ahead and do that in the next segment here. All right, so I'm going to fix this code now to solve this particular problem that we had. So one of the things you can do actually is grab a reference to the Aka.net cluster, which, yep, looks like Copilot's gonna grab that for me. And we just gotta make sure we bring in the right namespace, should be this one, yep. So we're going to grab the cluster and we're going to go ahead and call cluster.register on member up. This is going to allow me to register a little callback function that gets invoked when this current member of the cluster, this actor system, when this gets marked as up, this task is going to run. So I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and close over the duplicate detector up here. Gonna get rid of the cancellation token. That doesn't matter. That we already know this actor is up and running. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this code inside here. Now, one thing we don't currently support today is this has to be an action. This delegate, so we don't support uh, tasks. That's something that we can probably fix pretty easily. That's not really that big of a deal. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call dot results on this task here. We're gonna run it synchronously. That's unfortunate, but not the end of the world. And we'll just call this dot result get that down there and we're not going to use that value we just want to make sure this operation completes if it fails uh, it should still go ahead and uh, report an exception here so we'll see what happens let me go ahead and just try running this locally make sure that everything works okay so we'll get that built and let's see well i can see the actors definitely started so that's good uh let's see if i can find my log message anywhere in here um, you know, it's probably going to be buried pretty far deep in here somewhere, but joining a cluster, starting remoting, SBR will add, let's see if I can find, has started. There we go. Yep. Okay. I can go ahead and see the log down here. So we know this all works. All right. That's all well and good. I'm gonna go ahead and build a brand new Docker image and get that pushed into our registry and then deploy it into Kubernetes. And let's see if this fixed our problem. All right, so we've pushed a new version of our Docker container. So that's all up and running now. And that has that little fix we included that basically delays that startup check from running until after we've joined the cluster. Let's go ahead and actually redeploy everything now into our test lab environment. So let me do that. And we should be able to go ahead and see those pods start successfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the get pods watch command to go ahead and watch them all sync up live. What we wanna look for is the dupe detector should not be completing or restarting. That was the problem we were having earlier. So we're gonna spin up a total of 16 nodes. So we are gonna get all the way up to shard host 14. That's gonna be the last one we're looking for. We would have seen a restart by now if there was a problem. We haven't seen one, so that's great. Let's go and take a look at our data that we're gathering from Aka.net logging and take a look at the dupe detector. Let's see how it's doing. This is the new version we deployed, 0.4.2. That all looks well and good. Let's go ahead and do a live stream of it here. 
Uh, let's see. Looks like, if we take a look at this, looks like it's returned seed nodes. So the cluster is forming. That's great. And I'll go ahead and just keep that stream going. And yeah, this looks like a whole bunch of activity all related to the uh, sharding system starting to receive messages in the other nodes. So good. We're probably in healthy shape there. So that tells me the rest of the cluster is going. Let's take a look here. Yep, yeah, we're starting to receive events now from the rest of the cluster. So the cluster's fully formed. That's great. Let's go and take a look at our Phobos metrics. So I go ahead and reload this. This is going to take a minute to sync. Uh, we are only sampling data once every 30 seconds, roughly. And on top of that, it takes a little while for all the different gauges to go ahead and sync throughout the cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here real quick, and we'll check back in on the data in just a few minutes. All right, so I've got our data here. This is a, the, one of the Phobos dashboards for Prometheus. So I'm just taking a look at the cluster. So we have a total of 16 nodes. So everything looks good here. This is just over a relatively short time window. Uh, there's not a lot of logging activity happening in the cluster right now. It's by design. We've got a relatively small number of actors that are running inside this process, which is also, again, by design. And you can go ahead and see a breakdown of all of them down here, which ones are which ones are running. And if we take a look at our sharding data, we can see that we have exactly one uh, shard and one entity. This is by design. We're basically just using the sharding system to keep a singleton active, so it's easy for us to route traffic. We're also using Akadot cluster sharding that delivery. It's the other reason why we're doing that. But in the grand scheme of things, it looks like we were able to solve our problem by just making sure we delayed sending that little wake up message to our shard region until after we join the cluster. And that's what we can see here in the data. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learn. If you have behavior that depends on the cluster being active, maybe it's a good idea to delay doing that until you've actually successfully fully joined the cluster. And uh, that will help you avoid spending uh, lots of time debugging this issue, just like how I did. So thank you very much for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.